The Ableton Push. Oftentimes, left collecting dust in the corner of your studio are sold on the used market. The biggest reason, I think, is that people are using it the wrong way. The push is designed for creating something new. As a matter of fact, they don't even call it a MIDI controller. It's a musical instrument, because it's meant to be played from the ground up, creating something brand new. So let's take a look at this thing. The layout is actually really simple. It's broken up into two main sections. The top half is the controls section, and that includes the screen, these two rows of buttons, and the knobs across the top. The control section is broken down into four modes. You can toggle those modes over here. The bottom half of the device is the pad view. The pad view has two different modes that you can toggle right here. That's how you navigate the device. And when you start something brand new, it's pretty simple. Like in my case, there's nothing loaded up in the session at all. And to get started, I just need to hit add device and just start playing sounds the same way a guitar player picks up their guitar and starts just playing chords. Now beyond the top control section and the bottom pad view, you have these parameters along the right and left side. The right column is generally used for navigation. We have arrows and octave shift, changing the scale and just navigating the modes like we were just talking about. And on the left half, we have the editing and recording functions. So undo, duplicate, quantize, record, record automation, all that stuff is on the left side. In addition to that, we have this nice little ribbon controller that can function as the pitch bend wheel, the mod wheel, or a general remote control automation input. There's a lot of little subtle sweet tips about the push, but to get started, the best tip I can give you is to not connect it to a song that you're already working on. When you plug the push in to a session that you've already started at home with your mouse or your regular MIDI gear, it's gonna be more confusing and harder to tackle. You wanna start with an empty session with nothing in it, and your very beginning of your workflow is gonna start by either hitting add device right here, or just by navigating the control section to the browser, which when nothing is loaded in the session, that's essentially the same thing. So let's go ahead and play with some of these knobs up top. The first fun thing I wanna point out about the design is that, yeah, we can navigate our browser, but these buttons or these knobs are all also buttons. So I can go ahead and touch this and go into that category. I can touch this and go into that category. I can touch this and go into that category. Isn't that fun? But if we wanted to go to drums and maybe load a drum kit, which is where most people like to start making beats, I'll go to that 808 core kit and the lower right button is always the load button. Once I do that, you'll see the pads that were in chromatic view, like MIDI piano notes, turn into drum pads. This is tight, because now I can do finger drumming and I also can sequence the drums up top. We're gonna to talk more about how to sequence the sounds and how to arrange sections and even add chords and bass lines using this lovely interface in our upcoming videos in this series. But for now, plug it into a brand new session with nothing in it. Remember that it's meant to be played like a musical instrument and not worked on the arrangement view. And that's the other thing is that this is a session view device. So if you're not sure about how the session view works, you're gonna wanna unplug the push and you're gonna wanna learn about Ableton a little bit. I would recommend going to Slam Academy. This is our institution where we teach people how to create forward thinking music. But anyway, use the owner's manual, dig around on YouTube, but really focus on learning that session view. Because in addition to our pad view, being a note controller and a musical instrument, the other mode that it has is the session view. So this is probably familiar for those of you who use the session view already, and it's all based on adding a device or adding a track, and then using the notes mode to sequence those instruments. That's how the push is designed to be used. Along the way, you're gonna hit record, you're gonna add some automation, you're gonna tweak things as you go, but all of that entire ecosystem will be living on the session view of Ableton. As a matter of fact, once you record to the arrangement and have your song laid out on the arrangement, this thing becomes a MIDI controller. So if you really wanna take advantage of the push, learn a little bit about Ableton on the session view, and then plug this thing in and start jamming in the same way a guitar player just plays some notes in the name of having fun. So create something new with us. I'm JP at Slam Academy. I can't wait to see what you create with this device.
Discover your own sound at America's leading digital audio academy, Slam Academy. An Ableton certified training center, Slam offers in-depth courses in sound design, mixing and mastering, DJing, and more in Minneapolis, Denver, and online only at www.slamacademy.com.